example two. There are three examples we are going to do. Okay, you are going to be given a basic function from section 3.4. So what we're going to do is plot that graph based on our knowledge from section 3.4. And then you're going to be given a second function that is a transformation of that original basic graph. Okay, so we're going to apply the rules we just learned for vertical and horizontal shifts to graph the transformed function, okay? None of this will involve making a table of values, okay? So let's read the directions in example two. It says, describe how to transform the graph of f into the graph of g, then graph both functions on the same grid, okay? So let's take a look at part a. The original basic function is f of x is equal to x cubed and then the transformed function is g of x is equal to x cubed minus 2. All right, we are going to begin by graphing the basic function f of x is equal to x cubed. This is something we learned about in section 3.4. So remember I told you um, to memorize or you know be able to recreate the table to know specific points on this graph and you have to know the specific points because in order to create the transform function you are going to shift those specific points that you know that are on x cubed. Okay, so if you recall, x cubed goes through the point negative 2, negative 8. It goes through negative 1, negative 1. It goes through the origin. It goes through the point 1, 1. And then it also goes through 2, 8. Okay, those are the key points that fit on this grid. Okay, so if you connect the dots, it has that long S shape. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, it goes up in this direction forever and then down in this direction forever. Okay, so this is the original function f of x is equal to x cubed. Okay, so what we're going to do now is try to create the transform function. Okay, g of x is x cubed minus 2. Okay, so look what's going on here. We have the original basic function and we're subtracting two and there's no parentheses, okay? So this is a vertical shift. Since we are subtracting, we are going down, okay? So we are going to shift x cubed down two units to get the graph of g of x. And that's it, okay? So we're gonna go to each of the key points. We have five key points, okay? And we're going to shift down, okay? So negative two, negative eight is going to go down to negative two, negative 10, okay? And then negative one, negative one is gonna shift down two units. It's gonna end up at negative one, negative three, okay? The point at the origin is gonna go down two units. It will end up at zero, negative two. The point at 1, 1 will go down 1, 2 units. Okay, it will end up at 1, negative 1. And then lastly, the point at 2, 8 will go down 1, 2, one, two units. It will end up at 2, 6. Okay, so we connect the dots with the same basic shape as the original graph. That's key. Okay, here is your transformed graph. Okay, and that's it. All right, so this is g of x, which is equal to x cubed minus two. Okay, done. Moving on to the next one. All right, in part b, the original basic function is f of x is equal to the square root of x. The transformed graph is the square root of x plus four. Okay, so we will start in black. I will put the original graph, okay, again, you learned this in section 3.4. You've got to know the key points on the graph of the square root of x, okay? If you remember, that's 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3, okay? The square root function starts at the origin, and it just goes off in this direction to the right forever, okay? So this is the original function, okay? We have to use this to graph 
g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. Okay. Now, think about this for a second. I want you to take a minute before I work this out. Okay. I want you to venture a guess as to how you think this thing gets transformed. Okay. So, I don't know. I told you it's either going to be up or down. We're dealing with vertical shifts right now. Or, it, or Sorry, it's either going to be up or down or left or right. We're dealing with vertical and horizontal shifts. The question is, which one is it? Is it vertical or is it horizontal? And which way does it go? All right, so let's think about this, okay? Um, what's going on here, okay? There aren't any parentheses, okay? So you're probably thinking, okay, we're going to go up four. Okay, but in actuality, this is a horizontal shift. Okay, here is why. Okay, yes, there are no parentheses here. Okay, um, but I want you to think about what parentheses do. Okay, if you have a quantity in parentheses, like if I had um, x plus 4 quantity squared. Okay, if you have a quantity inside of parentheses, it traps that quantity. Okay, that quantity is stuck in the parentheses. Okay, the same thing is going on here. Even though we don't have parentheses, the square root acts like parentheses. That quantity x plus 4 is trapped inside of the square root. Okay, so even though you don't physically see parentheses, the square root is acting like parentheses. Okay, it is trapping the quantity, okay, inside the square root. So you can think of the x plus 4 as being trapped or as being in parentheses. So this is going to be a horizontal shift, okay? Since we're adding inside the square root or adding inside the parentheses, however you want to think of it, it is a shift to the left, okay? So what we're going to do here is we are going to shift the square root function Okay, four units to the left to get g of x. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take each key point and just move it four units to the left. Okay, so the point at the origin will shift four units to the left. So one, two, three, four. It will end up at negative four, zero. The point at one, one will go over one, two, three, four. Okay, it'll end up at negative 3, 1. The point at 4, 2 will go over 1, 2, 3, 4. It will end up at 0, 2. And then lastly, the point at 9, 3 will go over 1, 2, 3, 4. It will end up at 5, 4. Okay, you're going to connect it with the same basic shape. Okay, so this is the graph of g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. Okay, so I'm going to make some notes here. Okay, so I want to say here, there are no parentheses, but the square root acts like parentheses. It traps the x plus 4. Okay, so that's why this is a horizontal shift. Okay, now think about this. Okay, what would the equation have looked like if this were instead a vertical shift? Okay, here we go. This is what it would look like. Okay, um, let me rewrite that. Okay, so basically I had this over here because I was just trying to show you, you know, parentheses and square root. They both trap, they act alike. Okay. If this were a vertical shift, this is what the equation would look like. Okay, I'll call it h of x. Okay, you would be adding outside of the parentheses or adding outside of the square root. Okay, so h of x would be the square root function and then you add outside of the parentheses or add outside of the square root. Okay, so this would be the original function, the black graph. This would be the square root of x shifted up four units. Okay, because remember, if you add outside of parentheses or add outside of the trap, 
you go up that many units. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph that. Okay, so you would go back to the black basic graph, the original graph. You would take each point, move it up four units. Okay, so you would take the origin and go up four units. So you would end up at zero four. You would take the point at one one, go up four units. You would end up at one five. You would take the point at four two and go up one two three four. Okay, you would end up at four six. And then lastly, take the point at nine three and you would go up one, two, three, four. You would end up right here. Okay, so actually, let me get rid of this G of X business here. I'll rewrite it. Okay, I just want to make sure you understand the difference. So let me recreate this last point. Nine three would go up one, two, three, four, ending up at nine seven. Okay, so here would be H of X. Okay, so let me label this. This is H of X is equal to the square root of X plus four. Okay, and then this is G of X, which is the square root of X plus four. Okay, make sure you understand the difference. Okay, you will see this again and again. The square root acts like a trap. It acts like parentheses. Okay, going forward, another thing that acts like parentheses is going to be the absolute value symbols. Okay, they are going to trap the quantity inside. So if you're working with absolute value symbols, you're going to treat them like parentheses as well. Okay, all right. Speaking of absolute value, okay, that brings us to part C. Okay, the original function is going to be the absolute value of x. The transformed function is going to be g of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3. Okay, so we are going to start out. Let's start by graphing the original basic function here, which is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Remember, absolute value of x is the V shape. It goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. And then on the other side, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, and so on. Okay, so let me connect the dots here. Okay, uh, remember at the origin, you have to have a sharp corner. It has to be a V. We don't want to round it out right here. Okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to do this. Okay, the graph does continue in this direction forever. Okay, so let's go ahead and do something like this as well as I should have uh, had it continue in this direction forever as well. So let me just put an extra line on here. All right, so here's the original function. This is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So let's look at the transformed function here. Okay, so it's g of x, like I said, absolute value of x minus one, that quantity, plus three. Okay, we see two numbers here. You see a minus one and then a plus three. So there's actually two transformations going on here. Okay, so we need to figure out which one, uh, which what they are. Okay, so um, when there are multiple transformations, you should follow the order of operations. Okay, um, what I was telling you in part B square root and absolute value act like parentheses. Okay, so when you look at this quantity x minus 1 inside the, the absolute value symbols, you can think of the absolute values as being parentheses. They are trapping that quantity x minus 1. Okay, so we remember PEMDAS. Okay, so please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, um, when you're dealing with transformations, you definitely are going to deal with, you know, these, you could see these things. So parentheses always comes first. So here you're going to do the transformation that involves the X minus one being trapped in absolute value symbols first. And then because you're adding three outside of the absolute value symbols, that's addition. Eventually you will, do, you will do that. Okay. So you do, we're going to do the minus one first and then we will handle the plus three after okay all right so let's talk about the absolute value of x minus one okay what does that do again the absolute value symbols are acting like parentheses here so think about if you had x minus one in parentheses okay that's going to be a horizontal shift and since we're subtracting inside it is going to be a shift to the right okay so we're going to shift 
right one unit. Okay, so we're going to do that first. Okay, and then you have the plus three. Okay, the plus three is not inside parentheses, not inside the absolute value. Okay, it's on the outside. So that is a vertical shift. And so since we are adding, that means we're going to go up by that many units. Okay, so the plus three, that's going to make us go up three units. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take each point on the absolute value graph and we are going to shift it right one unit and then up three units. Okay, so I'm going to write that here. So to get g of x, take each point on the absolute value graph and shift it. Sorry, write one unit. So write one, then up three. Okay, that will give you your new transformed graph. Okay, so let's start with the point at the origin. Okay, I'm going to shift it right one and then up one, two, three. Okay, that's going to send us to the point one, three. And then, you know, I just start moving points. So if I go back to the black graph, take the point at one, one, we're going to shift right one unit and then up three. Okay, that's going to bring us to two, four. And then take the point at two, two, and then shift it right one up three. Okay, and you just continue doing this to all the points on the black graph. Okay, if you come over to the point at negative one, one, for example, you would go right one up three. Okay, so you're gonna end up at zero four. Okay, so if you transform all these points, okay, it's gonna look something like this. Okay, it is going to have the same basic shape. Your black graph has just been shifted. It's been moved right one and up three. Okay, so here will come the final graph. Okay, it's gonna look like this. We just connect the dots with the same basic shape. Make sure this guy has a sharp corner at the point one three okay and then let me extend it this way and then that will be it okay so make sure you put arrowheads on the end it's going to go up forever in this direction and then let me extend it this way as well ah. okay so here we go there we go same basic shape so this red one this is going to be g of x that is the absolute value of x minus one plus three. Okay, we're done. One more thing I want to mention about this particular example. Okay, once you get a lot of practice with transformations, um, you may be given just the transform function. So like maybe the problem will give you uh, g of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus one, that, that quantity plus three. They may not give you the original basic function. Okay, you may have to look at this and say, look at the equation and say, hey, it involves absolute value. So the original basic function I need to work with is the absolute value function, okay? You're gonna have to recognize the basic function on your own, okay? It won't always be like this, okay? So you just gotta, you know, keep that in mind. It's basically whatever you see in the equation, okay? Here it was absolute value symbols. So the basic function is gonna be the absolute value of x okay if you went up to part b and you know you were given the square root of x plus four it involves a square root function so the basic function is going to be the square root of x okay so it's not terribly difficult to recognize but just keep in mind you won't always be told what the basic function is you're going to have to recognize it from the equation